It's a special weekend, and I have, I am joined by a bunch of my uh, veteran families, I would call them. Um, I'm going to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves here in, in just a moment. Um, what we want to do today, uh, obviously, all around the nation, we celebrate our, our military families. But, you know, Fort Campbell, Clarksville, is, a, is an extra special place where a lot of our, our families are military. And so we wanted to make sure and highlight that this week. And uh, we're going to close our services today by having a special time of prayer, kind of some guided prayer for our military in general. And uh, we, we just want to say thank you. You know, there's so much of what we do today as a, as, a, as a church that we have freedom because of our military families and all the sacrifices that they make. And so we don't take that lightly. Amen? Amen. Um, so I want to I start over here. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to give you guys all a moment to introduce yourself, tell, your, tell us a little bit about what you do in the Army or how you're affiliated, um, who you are. Well, I don't know what that was. And, um, and then also, too, maybe even uh, some, some ways that you're involved here at Awaken. So I'm going to start right here with Katie. Tell us a little bit about who you are, how you're affiliated with the Army, and we'll, we'll get started there. Okay, awesome. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Katie Smith. Um, I've been in the Army for about six and a half years now. I'm a captain, uh, engineer officer. Um, I just actually recently came to Clarksville, probably a couple months ago. Um, actually, I guess it's more than a couple months in May. Uh, just got back from a deployment. So I've been trying to get seated into the church. Um, so I'm in a small group and a discipleship group now. Uh, just joined that recently. I'm really excited about it. It's already changing yeah. uh, my life. Um, and also trying to help out with the students on Wednesday nights. That's so great. Wow. So I, I love that. So here's what's cool about Katie. Katie is uh, not only new to the church, but already very actively involved. Awaken groups, discipleship groups, Awaken students. That's awesome, Katie. I'm going to actually start with some questions for you, if you don't mind. I'll, I'll start with just a, a question for you. A little bit of a... So, so what's interesting, like I mentioned about Fort Campbell, is we have so many military families, but we have a lot of non-military families, too. So one thing that I thought would be beneficial for all of us is for us to hear a little bit about um, your life and how do you, as a part of the Army, and, and even during deployments and that kind of thing, how do you maintain a growing relationship with God? And, and what does that look like for you? So that's a question that I've been um, trying to answer and practice uh, for the, my entire Army career. Um, in the beginning of my career, I think I was very focused on just doing a good job, making sure that I you know, put all my effort into um, being a good soldier. And I realized that, you know, that community and my relationship with God wasn't that strong, but I, I did start trying. So, you know, I was part of a church, but with, you know, training exercises, um, rotations that would take you out for a month or more at a time, it was difficult. So even though I tried to have a, you know, start build a community, I would find myself, uh, you know, in the sandbox, as they call it out at NTC um, in Fort Irwin, California, with no phone, couldn't use um, that to look at my Bible verses. So I struggled a little bit, to be honest. It was tough. Um, and I didn't have a good enough established community. So then, um, you know, I kind of worked on that throughout my years. And then on my deployment, I went in knowing that I'm going to make this a part of my daily routine. Like, I'm going to, you know, have my Bible. I'm going to um, try to find a community at my base where I was at. And I soon found out that I couldn't find a daily routine <laughs> with my deployment. I was always traveling. Um, but, you know, I did actually meet some people, and even my uh, linguist that I worked with, I mean, he was an Afghan linguist, and um, not typically you talk about Christianity with him, but he was actually really awesome because you're with him 24-7. He talked to me about his religion. I talked to him, and even that sparked um, some really transformative um, things that wow. I was really uh, felt proud to be a part of um, yeah. in his life. But yeah, so basically when I came back here, I was like, I know the, the thing I need to do is just get into a community and already my, I feel like my, my new awakened family has wrapped their arms around me. That's and great. I know that going into future training or future deployments, I will have um, kind of people that I can call back on when I'm struggling with uh, my walk with God. And, yeah, that's so good. So, so what I hear a lot that you're saying is being intentional. Yes. Your relationship with God doesn't just happen to grow. You've had to work at it. 
So I, I think that's an important thing. We're going to talk about that today in the message. It's just like all of our, all of our roles in what, in what God is doing here, it's not something that we just sit back and hope that he does. Yes, there's the miraculous side of it, but you've worked hard at building community. And uh, so that's one thing I admire about you, Katie, is that you, were, you found us right away and you immediately figured out how do I get plugged in. So thanks for all you do, Katie. Um, uh, let, I want to pass it down to Tim. So Tim, tell us a little bit about, um, is it on? There we go. Um, tell us who you are. Tell us kind of your affiliation with the Army and then what you do here at Awaken. Okay, first of all, thank you for all the veterans out there for everything that you do. Thanks for the support from one soldier to another. I uh, really appreciate it and love you guys. Uh, I'm Tim. I've been in the Army for about 17 years. I'm a helicopter mechanic. been coming and waking for about uh, five years. Uh, I'm one of the student leaders here, and uh, I really love this church. Uh, one of the one things I can say is that this is a family here. Uh, we love our veterans, and... Uh, Check. We good? Okay. Yeah, you're good. You're uh, good. We love our veterans here, and we really take care of them, and uh, thank you for all that you do. Yeah, thank, thank you, Tim. Thank and you, Kevin. So you guys are both in Awakened students as right. leaders. That's right. awesome. Very cool. So, Tim, um, I know a big thing for you, because I've talked to you personally about this, a big thing for you during a deployment is you're not always so concerned for your safety as much as you got to leave your family behind for a few right. months Definitely. at a time. Definitely. So talk to us a little bit about enlighten us. Um, there's military families, of course, who, uh, who know your struggle firsthand, but then there are a lot of us, non-military families, who've never been there. So give us kind of a behind the scenes of like some of the things that go through your mind, and then maybe add in how can we as a church help right. support you during a deployment? Oh, definitely. So I just got back from a deployment, and uh, I'm in the 160th, so I'm pretty much gone. I've been gone this whole year, and it's been, it's been a little bit rough. Being out there, it's... it's, it's it's kind of crazy, but I always fall back on my Bible. I always try to fall back on, you know, my friends back home, the words in the scripture that they send me, the emails, text messages has been pretty good. Everybody knows, just like Katie here, it's not easy being deployed away from your family. My biggest concern is, is my family going to be okay? Uh, you know, power of attorneys, wills, and stuff like that. As a church, what does a church do for my family? You guys show me support. You show my wife support. Not only that, that you show us support, but my wife also shows you guys support for the spouses who help us out and everything like that to keep me going. Because yeah. it's not easy being deployed. You know, we're away for so long and away from all this stuff that we have here, all the love. You know, my mindset is we got to go to war. We got to do what we do. But then when I'm back home, this is my family right here. And thank you very much for all that you do. Yeah, thank you, Tim. That's Thanks, awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that's, it. That's good. Good reminder for us. So let's transition a little bit here from some military families. You guys don't necessarily leave on deployment, but you feel the deployment. Yeah. So as a spouse or a, a son of, of someone in the military, um, Tina, let's start with you. Talk to us a little bit about what, it, what does it look like to maintain a strong marriage even during a deployment? That I can only imagine how challenging that is. I know Tim has been gone for, I don't know, like half of your marriage, you know, <laughs> down, down, you know, uh, <laughs> deployed and so, or, or training or traveling or whatever. So talk to us a little bit about what marriage life looks like for you guys. Um, the biggest thing for any military spouse, any military family is communication. When your spouse is here and when you guys are together, you show affection in different ways. You talk to them, you call them anytime you ever want to, um, just anything. You have the way you look at each other. When you're deployed or when he's deployed, communication is key. If I'm not constantly telling him, different things to assure him that we're okay, or if he's not constantly telling me things. We had to work on our communication pattern. Every marriage has their own communication language. The way that we did with ours is, is trial and error. We've made our mistakes, um, but we figured out exactly what it is that works between us, what he can communicate to me, what I communicate to him. Um, we have ground rules, so one of the things that we said is if we ever call each other on the phone, we never hang, out, hang up without telling each other I love you, especially if we're angry. And those are the times where you don't want to see it. Right, right. But we make sure of that. Right. And even when we're arguing, there's just certain boundaries that we don't cross. And we've made that amongst ourselves. This is what we are not going to do. And that's translated even when he's home in creating that communication environment and then the trial and error being done here to translate out there. So communication is the biggest thing for any military family. That's great, thank you, Tina. We, we're, we love you guys and we're so thankful for, for all that you do. Um, and I know that it's a heavy weight even while, while Tim's gone. And so it's, it's so cool to just see how God has kept you guys together and 
protected you guys in so many ways over the years, and we're just super thankful for you guys. Thank you. Um, Josh, so your dad is in the, in the Army. Yes. And um, you've grown up in this lifestyle. Yep. I did not grow up in a military home or with a background like that. In fact, it's funny to, to Jen and I sometimes that God brought us to Clarksville because we have zero background with the Army. <laughs> So we've learned a lot over the last decade, and especially as a kid. Talk to us a little bit about, Josh, what does it look like? What's on your mind when dad deploys? And, uh, and, and what's, you know, what's some of the struggle there? So when my dad tells me he's going to deploy, the first thing that kind of you, you think about is, like, is he even going to make it back? Like, it's, it, it beca as I get older, it's more real that, like, it's a thing that could happen. Um, and I don't know what I would do. But um, and then I kind of think about my siblings, especially, because, like, Two of them are younger and they don't really understand like the weight of where he's going or what he's doing. Um, it's hard to like see them kind of go through it, um, and they don't know where he's going or what he's doing. But um, another thing is like the responsibilities that you have when um, he leaves. So like mowing the lawn or dishes or laundry or whatever it is, it just it's if you take one person out of that equation like. Everybody else within that, within the family, just takes on that much more responsibility. And even it's like the little things, like what if somebody has to go to the hospital or is sick or like flat tire on the road? Like you don't have the dad or the mom or whoever it is there to like, yeah. like take care of it. So um, and it's always when they deploy when stuff like that happens. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like like this a uh, couple weeks ago, all the power went out. I was thinking, oh my gosh, of all the time, you know, I know we have some guys deployed, and then moms home with kids in the dark. Yeah. So, Josh, um, thank you for what you do, and thank you for that insight too. You know, just getting kind of a peek behind the scenes of what goes through your mind. It's interesting because how old are you, Josh? Sixteen. Sixteen, and you're thinking about those hard truths of what it looks like if dad doesn't come home. And you know, that's, that's the hard reality of what it looks like to be a military family. And Josh, tell us a little bit, so your name's Josh, you're 16, we got, we've established that. But tell us a little bit about like, how long have you been a part of Awaken and, and what do you do um, here? I think like 2013. Okay. 2012, 2013, maybe even 2014. And I got to baptize you. You did. Back in the day, you, that you was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, what, where do you serve? What do you do over I'm, here? You're I'm busy. in the social side. I'm a barista on the social side. Yes, so, you are. Um, two yes, services. you are. <laughs> One of my favorites, actually. Um, and three or four years ago, our whole family kind of re-evaluated our Christian, our Christian walk, and my dad kind of came a lot closer to um, Jesus, and that kind of realigned my whole family yeah. um, in the church because um, we weren't coming every Sunday, and we actually started coming like every Sunday. Started serving, started like just getting more involved, and I'm yeah. actually a student in Awakened Students. Yeah, that's so, awesome. That's so cool, um, Josh. But yeah, it's been so cool to watch God transform your family over the years. Yeah. I was talking to your dad about this uh, just a couple weeks ago, and I was saying, you know, it's it's crazy because when your family first started coming. When dad was in town, not deployed, the whole Brimmer family was here. When dad left, Brimmer family disappeared until dad came back, right? <laughs> and and I, I, told, I told him about that. I was like, you know, it's interesting now, that because now, even during a deployment, your whole family's here. Right. And he said, you know what, what shifted was that God finally got a hold of your dad's life. And when God did that and your dad started leading, like you just said, at home, it changed your whole family. And so what's cool, too, about that is not only do we see you guys around more, but now even during a de deployment or a training or whatever, your family's got the family, and you're part of it. And so we just, we just want to say thank you guys for all that you do. Um, I, I want to I take a moment in both venues. If we could just have any, any of our veterans, so those who are serving or have served, could you just stand where you are? We'd like to just take a moment and honor you. Come on. Don't be scared. That's right, come on, can we put our hands together for you? Please stay standing. Tim, Katie, come on, stand up. And then can we also ask the families of our, of our military families, would you go ahead and stand up as well if you're, a, if you're a kid, if you're a spouse that has somebody serving? We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful. Let's pray as you're standing. God, thank you so much for these military families. We ask your blessing and your grace over their lives. We thank you that they are here 
and God, that you are at work in such a powerful way in them. And we pray, Lord, that today you would speak timely, powerful truths and reminders to our, our hearts. And God, I pray especially just in the unique um, way that we are, are a, a part of the military here in Clarksville at Fort Campbell, that you would help our church to come alongside these families and minister in a powerful way. God, thank you for the freedom that we have to freely worship you and open our Bibles and sing songs and spend time together because of the sacrifice that these families make. We pray you'd bless them extra this week in Jesus' name. Amen.